Good afternoon, students watching me at home. I am Mrs. Oguleye Vio, your literature in English teacher. This afternoon, we want to look at revision on our work. this morning is on paper three and our paper three is based on drama and poetry it's on drama and poetry so let's see under this paper three we have four sessions and uh, the sessions that are divided into four we have session A, B, C, and D. Now, under session A, we have two texts that we've read. We've read um, Blood of a Stranger and Aves of Corruption. So, we have to look at four questions under this. We have four questions under this session A. Now, we have to follow instruction very well. Before you start your exam, first look at the instruction in each session. Under session A, which is African drama, we have the blood of a stranger, two questions. Under session A, the African drama, we have another text, Abbess of Corruption by Frank Ogodo. Now, all these two texts, The Blood of a Stranger, written by Dele Shali, and The Abyss of Corruption, written by Frank Ogodo. Now, these two texts are African drama. We have two questions coming out from Blood of a Stranger. Now, make it all together four. Now, out of these four questions, the instruction says, answer one question only from this session. So, you are free. You have four questions to accept as an out of the four, you have just one to pick. You are free to pick anyone. If you like, you can pick a question from Abyss of Corruption or a question from Blood of a Stranger. Please, my students, follow instruction. Follow instruction because it is possible for you to be able to attend up to two, two, three questions, but please pick one. Pick one. Now, we have four. Under session B, we have non-African drama. The non-African drama is also divided. We have four questions under this. We have A Raisin the Sun, written by Asbury. We also have She Stood to Conquer, written by Oliver Goldsmith. Now, all these two texts are non African drama. Now, under it, under A Raisin of the Sun, we have two questions. Under the She, she Stood to Conquer, we have two. Making four all together, pick one. That is what the instruction says. The instruction in session B says answer one question only from this session. Please. All together on that drama, we have two questions to be answered. You are to answer one question in session A, the African drama. Pick any one out of four. In session B, non-African drama, you are to answer one question. Pick one out of four. All together, two. Now, session C is... African poetry. The African poetry, you have to, we have two questions there in African poetry. The African poetry, we have two questions. 
Likewise, in non-African poetry, we have two questions. Now, the instruction under that African poetry says, answer one question only from this session. Out of two, pick one. Are you getting it? Now, out of two, pick one. Under non-African poetry, out of two, pick one. Are we getting it now? Now, my students, tell me, how many questions are to be answered all together on that paper three? I hope you are getting it. That means we are to answer four questions on that, on that paper three, which is drama and poetry. That is all. You are good to go. You are free. Four questions in all. Four questions in all. Now, this morning, we are, let's look at the question. Maybe we will, we will be able to treat one or two. We'll pick. Let's see. I'll start from The Blood of a Stranger, which is the African drama. Now, under The Blood of a Stranger, written by Dele Charlie, we have two questions there. You can decide to pick one. Just one. And when you pick one in African, in Dele Charlie, don't answer habits of corruption. So let's see. I want to look at a question there. I'm looking at 2017. 2017. Why here question, past question. Let me look at the question one under this. One, comment on the significance of the meeting between Maligo and Soko at the cave. That is the question one in 2017. What is the significance of meeting between Maligo and Soko in the cave? Yes. I hope we are paying attention. We've all read the text. We know what the text is all about. We know who Maligo and Soko, we know who they are. Now, what is the, the significance of their meeting in the cave? Now, if you want to look at, you know that in the blood of a stranger, the blood of a stranger is an African drama that is written by Dele Shali, telling us about the colonization of Africa, how the Africans have been colonized. We know who the white head in the text is. But before the white head comes into the, the land of Mado land, what happened? It was this same Maligu that he said he received a letter from his brother in the city that said that a visitor is coming, that they should allow this visitor to, to stay in their land. Because they believe that visitors are signs of diseases, evil. They believe that if they should allow visitors to come into their land, the visitor will bring about many evil things, pandemics, diseases, different diseases, evil. What they have not been practicing before, they will start doing it. So they believe that by their forefathers that they should not allow visitor. But because of the selfish interest of Maligu, he knows that if he should tell the people, you know who Maligu is, like second in command to the, to the king Satiki of Mandoland, he knows that if he should tell the people by himself, the people will not believe him. They won't believe him at all. So he went straight to Soko. You know who, he knows who uh, Soko is. That Soko is the priest of the land. He believes that Soko is like the mouthpiece of the gods, their forefathers. Whatever he says, people will believe him. So he now went straight to Soko in the cave because that is where, as, as custom demand, that is where Soko will live. That is where he stays in the cave, in the forest. You know, communicating with their gods, seen as the one that will listen to whatever the God says and tell the people. So he went straight to Soko in the cave. He now told him, you are the one that will do this work for me. Go and tell the people that a stranger is coming, that our forefathers said we should allow the stranger. Soko was so surprised. That why? Why do you want to tell people lie? Why do you want to make use of me to tell them what the God did not say? More in one way or the other, he has to force Soko to say it. When he was trying to dodge it, that he's not going to say that because people believe so much in him. 
Manigu told him. He said, if you fail to speak with people, if you fail to tell them that this is what the God says, that we should allow the visitor to come because the visitor is coming to bring good into our land. If you fail to do that, I'm going to expose you. What is that? To tell the people that you have not been sleeping in the cave. Yes, it is true. For many days or months or like that, we will look at Soko, we sneak out of the cave. According to the custom, Soko ought to be sleeping in the cave. But we we'll sneak and you know, sleep in our hut. And Manigu is aware of this. Manigu said, if you fail to say this to the people, to our people, I will expose you that you are not following, you are not obeying our custom. And because of this, to obey, I had to join hands with him to tell the people of the land that they should allow visitors, which is against the custom and tradition of the land of Mando. And so far to do this, he went ahead to tell the people of Mando that God says, the gods that told them not to allow visitors. Now, it's like the gods are now saying this again that they should allow visitors. People were so wondering. They were wondering what happened, what is it, what is going on? But they can't challenge Soko because they believe so much in him. They believe in that maybe the God, those God that said we should not allow visitors, now they are not saying that we should allow visitors. So they have to welcome Whitehead into the land. So that is the significance of their meeting. Why? Maligo went to Soko believing through the help of Soko, he will be able to fulfill all his plans. So that was why he went to the cave to, you know, involve Soko to support him. And the people believed so much in him. You know what happened at the end? The visitor came. You know who the visitor is? White Head. He's a white man. We, do, we use the name White Head to represent him. He's a white man coming into the village of Mandoland, and when he came, you know why their forefathers have been warning them not to allow visitors. All those evil that the forefathers they have seen ahead happened because they said they should not allow visitors. And they allow visitors. I believe it's not the fault of the people, but it's the fault of their so called so called the priest of the land that the people so much believed in. They put all their trust in him, they see him as, their, as, as, as the seer, as Somebody that, that, that do communicate to their forefathers. So whatever he says is the final. And he is the one because of, of his own selfish interest. Because Maligo also said it in his statement to Soko. He said, do you want to remain poor? Do you want to remain poor? Do you like sleeping in a, in a cave? Or even the hole that is not fine? Don't you want to get rich? This thing I'm talking about will bring money, will make you rich. Come on, wake up, wake up. Come on, let's do this thing together. So they look at the two of them because of their own selfish interest. They don't have the interest of the people in their mind, like Kindo, the son of the king. So that is the number one on the significance of the meeting between Maligo and Soko at the cave. If you have any question, you can send it to me. Now, I want us to see, look at number two question then. Under the blood of a stranger. Is I mean the observance of custom in Mando land. Yes, we want to look at how the people of Mando, Mando land observed, pay respect to the custom and tradition of the land. You know, this is of different ways. If you want to look at it, look at Kindo, the son of the king Satigi. Is a warlord of the land. You know who he is. People did not believe that he can read and write. You know who Kindo is. The observance of custom in that place. I will start from Kindo. Kindo, from the beginning of the text till the end, stood to his ground that he will not allow his own culture and tradition to be tarnished. When he sees that Maligu and Soko. It's like something is fishing between the two of them. He was looking at them. He knows that something is coming behind. That this same visitor that they said they should allow is not from their gods. He stood to his ground. 
Even when the, the white head came, the white man came to the village, when he failed to pay homage to the king, when he failed to respect the king, he has been in the land for two days. He said he was tired. He can't come and respect the king. It was this same king though that forced him. He sent some people to go and carry him from his sleeping bed. The first thing they brought him from his house where he was staying to the king's palace. And it was this same king though that forced him to, to, to respect the king, made him to lie down, to prostrate for the king, trying to tell him that in Africa, if you have not been doing that thing where you are coming from, this is our custom and tradition. When you come to the African land, you have to come and pay respect to the people of the land, to the head of the land. So it was Kingdom that forced White Head to prostrate under the feet of King Satigi. That is number one, observance of culture, culture, telling him that our culture is very important. You know all these white people, they believe that we don't have culture, we don't have tradition. What is our tradition? It's barbaric. They believe that African are, 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 are apes. They look at Africa like animals. They don't so much believe in Africa. So it was this kingdom that stood to his gun, trying to tell White Edge that White Edge, wherever you come from, I know you have something in mind. Because when White Edge came, he was trying to tell the people that, oh, he has come to the land of Mando. You want to come and assist the people? You want to give them good education? You want to build road? You want to do you know, all those promises he made? Whereas that was not his intention. He has something he has in his heart, in his mind. That is, he wants to come and steal their own diamond. He told them, I want to plant tobacco. He want to do this for them. That the people who stone, they will see the evil stone. Whereas the people, they are so ignorant. Picking those evil stones, where the stones are their diamond. Coming into the land to come and steal away their wealth, where the people, they are not aware. So it was this kingdom that saw it. That this man is evil. He's not having good mind, good intention concerning our land. From the beginning, he made sure the cock stone is not tarnished. Another way that we we'll see the observance of custom, in a custom and tradition in this place. You know, when King Do came, he brought with him gin, all those spirits gin that will intoxicate the people. The people started behaving irrationally. They started misbehaving. You know, they, they are no more going to the farm. No more doing what they used to do before. Their own local gin, their own local drink is Mampama. But when King, uh, when uh, Whitehead came, he introduced another type of gin to the people. And they started outside misbehaving. They no longer go to their working place anymore. They will stay in, in, in Whitehead uh, uh, house. All this, King Do has to caution Whitehead that he should stop this. This is not part of our tradition. We don't drink this type of drinks here. You know that White Head also gave the king these drinks that intoxicated him. So that is number two, observance of culture. But I want to also to look at in another way. The observance of culture here, if you look at Soko, who is the priest of the land, Soko failed to obey the culture and tradition of, of the land in the, land, in the cave. He will sneak. He will sneak and sleep in a hut. Even then, um, apart from Mando that said it, Kido also said it when Kindo and Wara went into the forest, they were in the cave, that Wara was afraid that, ha, ah, since he don't let us go to the cave, he said, let us go to the cave, nothing is there. So, ah, no, priest is there. Okay, priest. When last uh, has he slept in that place? No, he is not sleeping there, I know him. Why? Why did he fail to obey the custom of their land? He failed to observe the custom of their land as a priest of the land. Another way that we see the observance of servants of stop using human being. They should use animal. But Kido was trying to tell you that he should keep his mouth shut. What, uh, what is, he should tell us his own concern in this. Is it part of them that should keep short? That that is their own custom. They don't use animal. They use human being. That is another one. Another one is this. If you look at King Satigi, King Satigi as the king of Mandoland, when a 
everything has come to the end. You know, a lot of things happened that Whitehead and Parker came into the land. Parker was killed. But before Parker was killed, you know that Parker was sent to kill Soko. And it was Kindo that killed Parker. You understand? So, you know all this, when all this happened, and the case was brought to the king that want to make sacrifice. They are planning to make use of a stranger for sacrifice. That is why we have the blood of a stranger. So planning to make use of Bwara and sacrifice. Now, at the presence of the king's palace, we are able to see that they covered a, a, somebody who we don't know, thinking that the person there is the one they want to use for sacrifice. But it was King Do that let us know that the person they put there he is not a stranger. He, that the person is Parker. He was not a King Parker. From there, Whitehead said, King, I know it's according to your culture that nobody should kill during the peace period. And your son has killed during the peace period. What are you going to do for him? No, because the father is also intoxicated. I believe the man. As the king of the land has no action. Do you know the king did not have a second thought? Did not even think about it twice that this my son has been trying. That this my son is the one that fought till this time for our culture not to be trampled on that foot. The, the king did not even think about it. From that statement, he had to water the statement and banish his son out of the village, out of the town. Send his son away. But the son, King Do, he said he's satisfied. Because before he left, he made sure he killed a uh, white head. And they now use his blood. You know, white head is a stranger. So his blood was now used to cleanse all the evil in the, in the town. So he made sure he killed. Whitehead. We know, don't forget that Maliku is still there. But he said he will leave Maliku behind to take control. He's still coming back. Because after the death of his father, he's still coming back. He left Maliku. But he made sure that custom of the land says that nobody should kill during peace period. Mm -hmm. And his own son killed during the peace period. And that was why he sent him away from the land. So that is how we have the question on examining the observance observance of custom in Mando land. Any question? If you have any question we can ask. So I've treated um, the blood of a stranger. Let's try and look at another African drama, which is a uh, harvest of corruption. Harvest of corruption. We have two questions under that. We have to pick, if you decide not to answer anyone in Abyss in Blood of a Stranger, we can pick one in Abyss of Corruption. So let's see, we have one question here. The assess, assess the role of the police in the, in the play. We also have, how is Chief Aladdin Adua Maka portrayed in the play? I have another question here. 2016. Under Aves of Corruption, we have comments on our law as a victim of circumstance in the play. Comment on our law as a victim of circumstance in the play. And that one says that discuss the role of Chief Maladu Hade Amaka in the play. You know, if you look at these two questions, these different years, 2016 and 17. I will say that the question they asked in 2017, number four, is the same thing with 2016, number four. It's the same. 2017 says, how is Chief Aladi Amaka portrayed in the play? They are asking how is that Chief portrayed in the play? They also ask me here again, discuss the role of Chief Maladi Aladi Amaka in the play. You see, they are asking us, for the role he played, or how is he portrayed, the two are the same. Are we getting it? The two are the same. So we have to talk about the role of Shiv Ade Amaka in the play. Or how is the man portrayed in the play? Do we get it now? Now, 
Let's start from number one. The uh, question three there says, assess the role, assess the role of the police in the play. You know, if you want to look at that play, Abyss of Corruption, we have the commissioner of police. We have justice, we have, you know, we have the uh, uh, inspector Inoku and justice Odili and others like that. Those people are in line of law to make sure that the law is obeyed. But we want to look at the first person there, the role he played. That is commissioner of police. He is not standing in the post where the people believe he should. Seeing the commissioner of police that's supposed to stand for justice of the land is in support with Chief Aladi Amaka in his corrupt acts. You know who Chief Aladi Amaka is? A very corrupt man. We call him there in our text a pen robber. You know, you know, if you want to see how Chief Aladi Amaka is being portrayed, if Chief Aladi Amaka is being seen as no, let's bring it down to our society in Nigeria or wherever we call it here. We see how our so-called leaders. That is who this man is used to represent. Our leaders that do not have the, 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 the mind of people. They don't feel concerned for the people, whether they eat or not. All the money that belongs to the government, they put it in their own pockets. They put it in their own personal account. That is who Shibala Amaka is. You see him. Shibala Amaka is very fat man with big tummy. They don't have, any, they don't have anything to think about. They don't have the, the, the mind of the people. They don't care for the people. They don't even know maybe the people are hungry or not. The money of the, uh, you know, he's the minister of external affairs because he has influence. So he associated himself with uh, commissioner of police. You know, commissioner of police is one of his, you know, associates. He knows that why he connected himself with commissioner of police whenever he committed any crime. The commissioner of police is there to save him. You can remember. When he went to the house of commissioner of police, giving him money and all sorts of goods, gifts, he said, Chief, do it small, small, you understand? So that, so there is no problem. He also have some boys, police, that are working for him, so that he has to tip them. Shows how corrupt our society is. The people that we trust to fight for our justice, to make sure uh, the, the, the right thing is being done. They have the one backing Chief. Adi Adi Amaka, supporting Chief Adi Amaka in his evil heart. They fail to tell him the truth. They fail to let him know that what he's doing is not good. Now, he will have to go and bribe the, the commissioner of police. That is in the case of commissioner of police. But we also have another person, a police, Inspector Inaku. ACP Yakubu is there. These two people, you know the meaning of ACP. Yakubu and Inspector Inaku. The two of them are not corrupt like the Commissioner of Police. They are not corrupt. You know, Assistant Commissioner of Police. He knows what the Commissioner is doing. And this, you know, when a law was caught red handed at the airport with cocaine, so he has to free a law. He said, on want of evidence. Commissioner of Police, uh, ACP, Akubu, and Inspector Inaku, were there. Say, come on, somebody that was caught right down there. Now you are not saying that you want want of evidence. Something is fishing. That was why they went ahead. They want to investigate further, and they went ahead to investigate the case. And it is through the help of Inspector Inaku and ACP, Yakubu that all these evil people are brought to book. I hope you are getting it. Inspector Inaku, together with ACP Yakubu, they went ahead to investigate the case. They went to the minister, to the ministry, in where Shibala Amaka is working as the Minister of Western Affairs. They investigated, they, inter you know, they interrogated Ayo, who is the clerk in the, in the ministry. And that one also, you know, shows how corrupt we are. How corrupt? Every individual of us, we are corrupt in one way or the other. I started complaining. Ha, my own salary is small. Is this? Is that? 
And he said, if you want, the man wants him to release the secrets or the those documents of sheep, you know, how money is going in, coming, going out, you know, those, those, those information that he should give him money. And he gave him 1,000. So when he's coming back, we'll give you, give him, that means he collected 2,000 naira. 2,000 naira sent Ayo to five years in prison. Five good years. Through the help of these people, we're able to see all those atrocities, all those evil, all those, you know, corrupt ways that sheep have involved himself in. You know that, when we're talking about sheep here, it's not only the, it's not only the one. We know, we know Ochole, Ochole is there, Madame Ho, who is the owner of the uh, hotel, you know, uh, Justice Odili, Commissioner of Police, all of them, all of them. We have to receive their own judgment through the help of this police. So we can see at the end, all of them, you know, Chief was sentenced to 20 years, Madame Ho and Ocholi, they were sentenced to 10, and uh, uh, Justice Odili, Commissioner, and others, every one of them received their own judgments at the end through the help of police. So that is how we see the role the police pay. Those ones that pay the negative one or the positive one that they're able to bring these people to book. I hope you are getting it. Any question? So I've also explained how Shivaladi Amaka is portrayed in my explanation. So any question? But before I take my leave, I want to look at a question here that says, comment on our law as a victim of circumstance in the play. We know who our law is. Very desperate girl, a graduate. He believed because she has graduated, being the firstborn of the family, he came to the city, Jabu, living in, staying with his friend, Ogei. You know, because Ogei has started working, she's staying at home. And she was fed up. She looked at it that since, you know, she has been a graduate for many years. How long will she continue with this? You know, one day, when she was in the ministry, she met her, one of her old friends, one of her old friends in school, uh, Ochole. And you know who Ochole is, you know him. And you know her. Ochole. So he said, ah, my friend, what happened? What are you doing here? I'm looking for a job. He said, don't worry. You have a job already. Come and see me tomorrow. You know the type of job they have. They don't need to write application. You don't need to sit for exam. No, just come because of the corrupt act of she. So he is the victim of circumstance in the play. He is the victim of circumstance in the play. So, I will not to stop here because of our time. I will have you, I will give you some questions that you need to read. You need to, you know, you know, you read your exam focus and uh, you answer the question, forward it to the WhatsApp, the email, Christly School at gmail.com. So you send your question to me. I want you to treat 2016. 2016. You know, we have treated the African drama. We have